Okay, uh, hello YouTube. We're going to be talking about another uh, kind of demo problem using geometry um, and in MATLAB and kind of just getting familiar with some problems that you can deal with um, that can be beneficial, kind of just introductory stuff. So we're going to be looking at this problem here. Um, we have a volcano and we have um, the top uh, width to be 180 meters, the bottom is to be 1650 meters. And we also have the height, which is 1,700 meters. Um, we know that the density of the volcanic rock is 2,900 kilograms per meter cubed. Um, and it has the, hem the lower hemisphere, kind of represents the divot, I guess, at the upper part of the volcano. So um, how are we going to solve this? Well, before we kind of jump into MATLAB here, um, I kind of wrote out the problem here. What I usually do, since I'm just starting out, um, get out a pen and paper, write it down, and see um, if you can do it kind of on your own. Outline your thoughts before you can transfer them to the computer. So first, I wrote out the given information here, and brown represents the volcano, um, and it was given the height to be 1,700, so I wrote all this information here. Um, and then what I'm going to end up doing to solve this is I'm going to make the volcano look like a cone. I'm going to take that volume of that cone, I'm going to calculate it, subtract it from this cone here to get just the brown part. And then after that, I will calculate the sphere here and just uh, divide that volume by two to get that lower half. And then I'll have the entire volume of the volcano. From there, I can find the mass of the volcano by the density that is given. So again, here are the formulas we're going to be using. The volume of the cone, the volume of the sphere. We're going to be using this formula twice, and we're going to take this value and divide it by two at the end to get the volume of the volcano. So again, this large cone divided by the small cone. Um, minus half of this um, sphere here. I didn't draw the sphere, but I only did like the half, which is in red, um, to get the volume of that. Um, and that's kind of my approach to this problem. Um, many ways you can do to um, approach a problem such as this. So I'm first going to define my variables. So I'm just going to like put a comment here, like given dimensions in meters, just for noting the units. So we have base one is 1650. We have our base 2, which is eight, 180 meters. And we have our height 1, which is 1700 meters. Um, so that's just all this information there. So now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use proportions to calculate height of large cone. Um, so uh, pretty much, I want to find this height too. So, how do I do that? Um, I simply take the base. I was like you said, I have the fraction. So the base to the bottom. Um, excuse me, this one I defined as base two. So this base um, times the height divided by this base to get the proportion. So to do that, I'll just put that in here. If you set up the proportion on paper, it'll be way easier to see. Um, unfortunately, I didn't do that in the video or in my scratch work, um, but that's how you would do it. Um, but I just wanted to show you like my outline of thoughts so it would be easier to understand. So now we've calculated the new height to be 185. So that's this part right here, that question mark we just figured out. Um, so what we want to do is what's that total height, that big H. So that big H is simply H1 plus H2, right? Smaller height plus the... Uh, so the one height here plus that height is the total height. So now we have that. Um, and E plus 0, 0,3 at that end, that just means times 10 to the third power. So um, that's scientific notation there for you. Don't get freaked out. It's okay. Um, so now um, we will be using the volume of a cone to calculate the um, volume of the large cone. So we're going to try to do the large cone. So, but first we want to get that the radius is the radii, I guess. Um, so this we would take our first um, base and divide it by two to get the radius. So that's our first radius. Same thing, second radius, which is that upper portion. So this is the first radius here. Then you simply take that divide by two. And then we have this radius here. Take that length and divide it by two. So we're doing that. One eighty divided by two. Let's press it. Um, and then we'll have we'll call it. Um, volume one, just to make life easier for the big portions. And that 
as equal to one third pi um, r one, because that's what we're dealing with, the larger cone squared squared times the big H height. And that's using the volume of a cone to calculate that value, and we get this is our large cone. But we don't want the large cone, we want to um, figure out what just this brown part is. So we have this huge one now, but we need to subtract this portion. So we need to find out what that is. So we'll call that um, volume two. Same thing, one third times pi times the radius two now, uh, squared times, but now it's gonna be H2 because it's this little height here. And we get that and we have the two volumes. So now we'll say, um, Volume 3, since it's not the volume of the volcano quite yet, um, but volume 3 is just going to be the brown part now is what we're looking for. Um, so that would simply be our bigger volume, which is volume 1, minus our smaller volume. Um, and that is now the volume we just calculated of the brown part here. Um, so there is a lot of finesse you can do here by putting all the comments, but um, I'm going to just refrain from that just for time purposes and uh, keep moving on with the calculations. Um, so now we need to find the volume of the sphere here, so this red portion. So we're going to only want half of it, but first we'll just calculate the full thing of the, the full sphere. Um, the radius we already have here is at 180 over 2. So that's going to be the same radius in the formula for the volume of a sphere um, is 4 thirds. 4 thirds pi r. Um, and our r2 is what we're going to be using because that was the uh, one that we want cubed. So then we have that and that is the volume of the sphere. Now we want just the volume of the lower hemisphere. Well, I guess I'm kind of being weird now by using actually spelling things out. Um, but um, so that would simply be the sphere divided by two and then we get that lower portion. So now we want to find the volume of the volcano. So that is simply the calculated width value, which was our V3, which is that brown portion, minus the lower half or the lower hemisphere of the sphere, which we calculated to be <laughs> volume lower hemisphere. Um, and that was the volume of the volcano now. So we got that down. Um, so we're happy about that. Now that was the end of the problem for the volume of the volcano. Um, and that was the measurements are in meters cubed, I believe. But now the next question part of it says, um, what's the mass of the volcano? And we have the volume now, we just calculated that. Um, and it's given that the density is in kilograms per meters cubed. So simply to find the mass of the volcano, you take the volume of the volcano times the density of the volcanic rock. But I just realized we need to define the density of the volcanic rock, so that wouldn't work. So let's define the density. Um, I'll just put a density to be 2,900. And now we take mass of the volcano equal to volume of the volcano times the density. And boom, that is our mass in kilograms. That's quite a heavy volcano. Uh, that makes sense. Um, so that is pretty much your calculations here. Um, um, pretty much that's it. Uh, using MATLAB, using math to MATLAB. So using your math here and having MATLAB being your handy dandy tool to help you out. Um, it's really interesting getting familiar with the codes and stuff. Um, I'm just starting out too. So i um, kind of hoping I could help you guys out as well, well as I'm learning. Uh, so hope this was helpful and stay tuned for more videos.